All right. You ready for the word? Yes. Okay. So we have been studying on um, something that I've titled. Some of you have heard me minister on it. Um, but God always brings new revelation. Also, there's also new people who have not heard what the word says in that particular area. So Matthew chapter number 13. Matthew chapter number 13. Jesus is teaching on parables. Or he begins to teach on parables. Amen. Begins to teach on parables. And um, this first parable he teaches on in the book of Mark. If you're here last week, I mentioned it. That in the, in the book of Mark, where the same parable, Mark chapter number 4, where the same parable is taught, it says that if you don't understand this parable, how then would you be able to understand all parables? And the parable really speaks like the word of God. The whole word of God is a big parable. Amen. And it takes the revelation of Almighty God for you to catch what the Word of God is saying. You know, um, um, I like watching all these, um, you know, like espionage movies uh, where, and then, you know, like there's a, there's a series that is on television. I don't even know what channel it is, but it's called SWAT, S W A T. And I, I love watching it. Sometimes you know, I just love watching it and and, 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 and these guys are very highly, <clears throat> or they are portraying themselves as very highly skilled or trained, either military men or policemen, and they, they go into very difficult situations. But what it is is that a lot of times they use coded messages, the, the way they will signal to to one of their colleagues that maybe they can see someone hiding in a particular place. If I went with them and they, they did that signal, I, I will physically go out to be shot because I don't understand it. You understand what I'm trying to say? But they know that maybe that is not a time to make a move. Now, same thing with the word of God. We, that's why God has given us what? The Holy Spirit. So that he can give us the signals. He can give us the what? Revelation to catch what the word of God is saying. I know sometimes your friends, uh, you know, who do not understand the word of God, they, they, sometimes they come accusing you. Or they come accusing, well, they try to take the word of God and say, well, the word of God says this. But they don't understand the revelation in the word of God. The person behind the word of God. Amen. You know, it's like <clears throat> stuff happens in our, in our, in our homes. Let, let's say, I can walk into the house and see something and I know that that which I've seen, I know Siobhan did that. You will not know. Or Sinead did that. Or Jane did that. Or Kofi did that. Why? Because they know the nature. We know our nature. Amen. We know our nature. Excuse me. <clears throat> and so what happens is that we know that Jane will never leave this here. Or, or Kofi will never put this here by nature, even though you didn't physically see them. See, when you approach God or you approach the word of God, you have to recognize that God is what? Love. That alone, you know, when I'm reading the word of God and I don't get it, even when I'm in parts of the word of God that there's so much killing and, and all kinds of stuff, and I'm wondering, you know, it kind of goes against everything that I believe, but I say, but God, you're love. You understand? I know that is his nature. And I may not fully understand yet, but when I approach it through the nature of God, first and foremost, the last person that I will accuse is who? God. It's the last person. Now, whether I accuse him or not, it make no difference anyway, but what I'm trying to say is, you know, because of the revelation that I have of him, that he's a loving God, you know, um, Andrew Womack, one of my fathers in the Lord, you know, you know Andrew Womack, he's been here a few times. And um, he, he, anytime he's praying, I love it. Anytime he opens his mouth to pray, I just love the way he prays. He starts by saying, and Father, you know we love you. He always starts by saying, and Father, it could be, the, the devil could be screaming in his face. He would start by saying, and Lord, Father, you know we love you. Or, I love you. I mean, it's so personal. You know, never mind the situation. Never mind that everything is caving in. You say, Father, you know we love you. Or, I love you. 
Isn't that awesome? Yes. Because he knows the nature of God. The reason, the, the, everything could be imploding or exploding. It doesn't change the fact that the Father is love. It doesn't change it. You understand what I'm trying to say? But a lot of us, sometimes we approach God based on the circumstances. Hey, I'm dying, Father. You, you understand? You, you go with the circumstances. Amen. You should know God by what? Nature. By nature. And that's how I approach the word of God. And in this parable are principles that open up scripture. Praise the Lord. Are you still here? So we got to verse number 22. Are you in Matthew chapter 13? If you've been following us, you will notice that we have talked about Jesus. Uh, he's talked about four kinds of hearts in the parables. The first one was the wayside, and we said that was his heart of, of, of distractions. Now, first of all, let me begin by saying your heart is not fixed as it were. You decide. Now, God wants you to fix your heart. Amen. Amen. The psalmist says, my heart is fixed. Okay? That means you can fix your heart or you can unfix it. You can take it another direction. God does not control that. You do that. But what is your heart fixed on? And how is your heart fixed is how you will receive or not receive from God. Amen? So watch this. Um, we were, so we've looked at the wayside heart, which was distractions. And then we looked at the stony heart. Last week, we, we talked about offenses. Okay, offenses, offenses, offenses. And then, now we're going into verse number 22. Or let's begin from 21. It says, yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of uh, of the word, immediately he stumbles. And we see that word is the word he's what? Offended. He's offended. Okay? Then verse 22 says, Now he who receives seed among thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. Now something interesting is happening here. By this time, this particular heart, what Jesus is showing us is that the, the, the heart or the word is beginning to show signs of fruitfulness. Because if that was not the case, he would not use the word unfruitful. You get that? So it's beginning to show signs of what? Fruitfulness. Amen. He says, he says, this one is so, that means that the seed was beginning to germinate. All right? Are you in um, 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 Matthew? Go to Mark chapter number four. Go to Mark chapter number four. There's a scripture that, you know, is a very powerful spiritual principle that governs a lot of things to do with the kingdom of God. It says, it's as if a man sows a seed. If you, okay, verse 26. It says, and he said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by day and the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. You know, when you take in the word of God, it's not your your purpose. It's not your ability. It's not in your remit to see whether the word of God will grow or germinate. That is not yours. The word of God has power in itself to what? To grow. What you do is fix your heart the right way. Get the soil of your heart right. Amen. So he says that he sows the seed but he goes night and day. That means he goes about the things of life but he does not know how. But watch this. It says, for the earth yields crop by itself. The earth. Now, in the natural, in the natural, if you have, a, you see the earth, people don't realize that the earth is something else. When you, you put a fence, a natural fence, in, let's say, your backyard made out of wood in the ground, 
you will notice that after a while, let's say after several years, you will notice that the fence is being eaten from the ground. Why? Forget about termites and all those. Let's say there were no even there were no ants or anything. The earth has a power to say, I want stuff to grow. So it begins to eat at, sort of begins to, to attack this wood that you have in the ground, saying, Won't you grow? It has, naturally does that. That's why the Bible says here, for the earth yields crop by itself. You get that? Your heart, which is being compared to the earth, has that capacity. Now guess what? It will grow anything. So if you put in offense, what we've been seeing, guess what it do? It will grow offense. It doesn't decide what it grows. It just has the capacity to do that. If you put in bitterness, guess what it will do? It will grow bitterness. If you put in unforgiveness, guess what it will do? It will grow unforgiveness. Amen. Amen. But guess what? If you put in the right seed of love, of kindness, of joy, guess what it will do? It will grow that. It will multiply that. It will bring the same increase that it will bring to offense, just like it will bring to what? Joy that you have put in your heart. Because the Bible says that for the earth yields crop by itself. So you put that dry piece of wood, which is the fence, in the ground, it begins the ground. The earth begins to eat the fence off. Why? Because it's, that is the power in the earth to say, wouldn't you grow? Now, if it was a proper seed that you put in the ground, it will cause it to what? Grow. Because the earth, what? For the earth yields crop of itself. By itself. Then watch this. It says, then, watch the process. It says, first the what? The blade. Then the head. After that, the full grain in the head. You know, one, one, one profession that sometimes I don't talk about that much, that I love so much, is farming. Love it. When I was a kid, growing up in Ghana, I used to grow all kinds of stuff. My father, you know, anytime he would watch me from the house, and we had this huge backyard. And he had all kinds of, you know, overgrown stuff. And during the holidays, I get myself a cutlass. And I get myself a hoe. And then I begin to attack the, 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 this, all this growth. And my father will stand in the house over a porch and he will watch me for about three days. He will come out and he will watch me. Three, I know he's there. But I don't pay any attention to him because I know what he's doing. He's trying to see whether I'm serious. He thinks, you know how you get excited about something? I'm going to do this and this. You do it three days, you quit. Huh? So he watches me. Then do you know what? By the third day, suddenly I'll see a tractor come into the house. He will call. He will book a tractor with a plow. Okay? And then he, he will show up and it will just tear everything down, cultivate, you know, just turn the soil and stuff like that. When he sees that seriousness in me, because he noticed that I'm still out there chopping stuff up, and you know what? And where we lived, you could have snakes. I mean, I've killed cobras. Now, take it out of the National Geographic, but I've killed cobras. I have, I have killed pythons. You see, you see, when I was growing up, we, when we see a snake, we don't catch it, Okay? <laughs> We don't catch it and relocate it. We didn't have that. <laughs> we, did, we didn't have, you know, have you seen, have you seen that thing the guy does um, uh, in South Africa? Um, what's it called? Snake, whatever. He catches the snakes and he re relocates them. Every time he's catching snakes. We didn't have that grace. Hallelujah. So when we saw the snake, that was the enemy. We killed the snake. Hallelujah. Lizards could go free, but snakes, we killed them. You know, and I'm telling you, we had snakes, we had scorpions, 
and I'll be out there just with my bare hands pulling weeds and dig, and right the corner, around the corner could be a snake just let, let you. And I'll do this stuff because I, I just, then he will bring a tractor and it will clear the whole place. And guess what? I will do flower beds or plant beds. I'll grow tomatoes. I will grow onions. I will grow lettuce. I will grow beans. I mean, corn. I'll grow all these things. Or we will do that. I'll say that. You know, and I, I used to manure them and do all these things. And I just loved it. But the process is this. The process. When you plant, by the next day, when you put the tomato seed in the ground and you go the next day, the ground is still the same. It's still the same. Three days later, you may see the blade. See this? It says, for the earth yields crop of itself, first the blade. There is a process. Then he says, then the head. After that, the full grain in the head. Close to the neighborhood where we live, you know, there are all these tracts of land. So I don't, I don't know why this year it's corn. They're planting a lot of corn. As even when we're coming from Liverpool, it's a lot of corn. I don't know why this year is a lot of corn. Just corn. Sometimes it's, it's other things. But this is like corn, corn, corn. And, you know, I used to see the corn. It was just this little. But right now, it's beginning to flower. It's beginning to flower. But it didn't start that way. So coming back into the book of Matthew, the Bible says that he sowed the seed. And it began to what? Grow. It began to grow. It began to show signs of fruitfulness. It began to show signs of what I would say manifestation. And that's what happens to us. We begin to see, you know, we've been in God, we're trusting God, and we begin to see stuff begin to happen. But it doesn't mean that is the end of the process. Because watch this, come back to Matthew chapter uh, 13. He says, now he who receives seed uh, uh, among thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world. Let, let's talk about that, the cares of this world. You know, Jesus, Jesus took a whole section of the scripture and talked about cares. So let's go see. Let's go to the book of Matthew and chapter number six. Matthew chapter number six is important. When a whole section of the word of God is dedicated to, to a particular subject, it is important. Amen. Matthew chapter number 6, verse number 25. It begins by saying, it says, therefore I say to you, do not what? Worry. That word care is the word to worry or to be anxious. So he says, do not worry about your life. Wow. Then what is there to worry about? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Don't worry about life. Hallelujah. You know, this is not a suggestion. Hallelujah. This is a command. Hallelujah. Let, me, let me submit something to you. Thank you Do you know what? God did not create us with a worry bone in, our, in us. Yeah. If I should say that. Yeah. Not with a worry cell. Not with the worry boat, nothing. Have you ever seen, have you ever gone to your young children? You know, when you have a baby, when you have children, you go to, in the morning and then they are lying in their cot. This is before they, they, they get charismatic, but they are, <laughs> they are lying in their cot, you know, chuckling away. Do you see in their face where they are wondering, how am I going to pay the electric bill? And how are we going to put petrol in the car? You, you think that they, they, they do that? No. They don't do that. They couldn't care less. Amen. But you know what? They learn. Guess who teaches them? Talk to me. Say it loud. You are black and proud. Say it. <laughs> We who are raising them up, huh? we teach them to worry. That's how they learn to worry. We teach them by the things we say, the way we act. 
So it's so important. I remember when we were raising the girls, one time we came up with this thing, Jane and I, where we say, we say you know, we, we, we had to stop ourselves in our tracks because we used to say things like, we can't afford it. And we stopped it. I mean, we know that it's a thing that we know. We stopped saying that. He said, but if you can't afford it, you can't afford it. <laughs> we stopped saying that. We, how do we say, what we began to say? We said we cannot, what? We are not able to get this right now. That's all we said. We are not able to get this right now. But we stopped saying, we can't afford it, can't afford it. So they go in the shop, they pick this, we can't afford it. We say, honey, we can't get this right now. So just pick the catalog. Pick the picture. And let's keep looking at that picture. And speaking the word of God over that picture. And I'm telling you, that picture in the catalog is going to suddenly take shape and form. And it will become the transformer that you always wanted. Yeah, but we stop saying, what? Can't afford it. Can't afford it. Well, this is going to kill us. This is going to break the bank. Yeah. We stopped it. I'll never forget where we sat down one day and said, honey, we've got to stop this saying this thing. And the kids were that high. And we stopped saying it. Amen. Listen, I have driven stuff, lived in places, traveled the world, all not because I could afford it. Are you listening to me? Not because I could afford it. Because I have a God. Now, I didn't steal it. But I, had a, I have a God who supplies my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And you have the same God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So watch what you're saying. Are you still here? So Jesus coming back, he says in verse 25, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life. About your life. You know, you should read this and meditate on this. Trust me. Let's move on. What you will eat, what you will, you will drink, nor your body. <laughs> you know, some of the things don't tempt me, tempt me to preach it. So just take it as it is. What you will put on is not life more than food. And the body more than clothing. He says, look at the birds of the air. I lo- this is the part I love. He says, look. You see, some of you should go bed watching. You should. <laughs> yeah, Royal Society. Not to kill the birds. To watch. Watch with your eyes. Go bed watching. Amen. Go nature watching. And I love it. I always, in the summer especially, I just love to look at the bin outside the house, on the side of the house. And I watch the, the, the birds in the morning. And, you know, I like making stuff in my head. But you know that, you know that the, well, ours is the, green, is the green bin which we put the, what do you call it? The food, the waste. Everybody puts it in the green bin. Some councils have different things. You have brown. No, we put bottles and stuff like that in the brown, but the, our green bin is what we put the waste, the food waste. And you should see in the summer the worms. You know, obviously, because they pick it every other week. So obviously, it you know, generates all these worms. And you are, I know, you, so the moment I said worms, some of you went, eh. <laughs> but you should see these birds. When they see that, when they see the worms, they start to break dance. <laughs> what? They begin to sing. This is the day that the. I mean, they're just, they're just dancing. You understand know, what I'm saying? They are filled with joy. Some of the best, I watch them. They pick up well. <laughs> God, you know, that, that's what I love about nature. Because, you know what? When the scientists are saying, where well, they have evolved with a long, longer beak. Evolved from where? God created them with that beak. You know, but they are able to stack their beak. 
You know, they will not eat. They stack their beak up with all these worms hanging, so many of them, you know, and then they fly off. I guess they have a nest somewhere. Then they come back. But they are full of joy. God supplying for free. Yeah, they didn't pay for it. And that's what the Bible is saying. He said, go bed watching. Learn something. The Bible is full of animals. Some of it, it says, go to the ant, thou sluggard. Then it will teach you something. Consider his ways and be wise. Then it will teach you about maybe, maybe the antelope. Then it will teach you about the lion. Then it will teach you about the eagle. And all those things are lessons. That is what he's saying over here. He's saying here, look at the birds of the air. For they neither sow nor reap nor gather into bands, yet the heavenly father feeds them. Are you not more of value than they? He's got your back, like they say. He's got you. Amen. Then he says over here, which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? What I understand is that rather you get ulcers. Yeah. You get perforations in your tummy from worrying. Verse 28. So why do you worry about clothing, women? That is what my Bible says. <laughs> Yours doesn't say that. Then it says, for you women, consider the lilies of the field. How they grow. They neither toil nor spin. You know, in the summer in my walks, one of the things I do, when I show it to Jane, she's surprised. She said, how did you do all that? I take pictures of flowers. You know, when the, in the spring, when the flowers begin to, I just like to take it. And, and with the iPhone, it has this portrait thing, oh, when you take pictures, it's great. And I just take pictures. Just take pictures. I just take pictures as I walk through neighborhoods, as I walk through the woods. I just see something, and I just take it. Take it. And I sent some flowers that grew behind. It just bloomed for a few days. A few days gone behind the house. I just saw it. I said, this is something else. And so I took a picture of it. I sent it to my mother. I just sent it to my mother. Man, she spoke about those flowers forever. She said to me, what's the name of it? I said, I don't know the name. I just, <laughs> but beautiful. I mean, the colors are so, so rich. And just doing that, when I stop to take those pictures, when I look at those, it just does something for me. But the man said, go flower watching. Is he here? I'm not a, see, people think that I'm just so, Is he here. Then he says, and yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now, let me stop right here. It has been proven that if you calculate, this is from good, reliable sources, biblical economists, people who study the word of God, in that, it's been proven that if you brought the wealth of Solomon to today, it will make Elon Musk or whatever his, his name is, like a pauper. It's been proven. That's how rich Solomon was. I mean, the guy was mega, mega, mega. I mean, seriously rich. And the Bible says Solomon in all his glory was not even arrayed like any of these flowers. Now, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? I remember about two years ago, my, my mother was very ill, just very ill, you know, somewhere, just got very ill, and she, for the first time, you know, apart from having her kids, she was admitted in hospital. And she, when she came, when she, let's just, I have to fast forward, but when she came back home, when she was, you know, when she was healed and everything, and she had a vision while she was there. Because the doctors were doing everything. As far as the doctors were concerned, she was a goner. 
And then all of a sudden, her eyes went like this, bing, and she was up. And do you know what it was? She had a vision. And in the vision, she said, I saw this city. She said, beautiful. She told me personally. She said, Be- she said I have not seen. And when she said that, I said, I said, I said, I said, woman, you were going, you were going home. I have sat with people who say, I saw the city. Our good friend said, I saw this city. That was it. She's gone. She went. She's dead. The moment they start to say, I see that city. You know, they, they immediately everything on this side cannot be compared. And my mom said, this man led her to this line. Because she wanted to go. She, she wanted to go into the city and come back and come and tell. And he says, the man said, if you cross this line, you won't come back. So she said, what do I do? She says, go back and finish what you're supposed to. And her eyes went, bing, healed instantly. The doctors were like, what happened? She had been there for so long. They were working on her for a few days. And as far as they're concerned, they were going to pick up the phones and call us and say, your mother is gone. And guess what? This is just recently. This is just before the COVID. And when I sat down, she was describing heaven. My mother, when she was young, she traveled the world because of the work she did. She traveled the world, all kinds of places. And she was saying, I've never seen beauty like this before. And the scripture says here, here, Solomon in all his glory. And he said, was not arrayed. There is nothing that can be compared. The scripture says, now if God clothes the grass of the field, and today and tomorrow is gone. Do you know there are flowers that bloom like they bloom 24 hours, they're gone. 12 hours, they're gone. They're gone. They show up in the morning by afternoon, by evening. That's it. Once a year, done. You, you say, why does God do that? He just loves, he just loves to do it. Just beauty. Amen. I mean, even today, if I brought all of you in front like this and the cameras panned, all of us wearing different things, expressing ourselves what? In different ways. God says, he who does all these things, won't he take care of you? Why are you worrying? Somebody is saying, but what else is there to do? <laughs> well, I'm trying to say to you, there's an alternative. <laughs> Don't worry. Amen. Don't worry. Now, I agree with you that, yes, because your mind is, is not a vacuum. So if you, you don't fill it with worry, then you've got to fill it with something else. That's where we are going to. Watch this, verse 31. Therefore, do not worry. What is the next word? Ay, 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 ay. See that? Do not worry saying. See, the worry comes out of your mouth. And that's when you empower it. The King James Bible, this is the new King James. Okay? The King James Bible says, therefore, take no thought saying. When you begin to say the worry, you empower it. Are you catching this? Verse 32 says, oh, verse 31, therefore do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For after these things the Gentiles seek, for your, hus- for your heavenly father knows that you have need of these things. But he says, seek first the kingdom of God. That is what you replace with worry. So instead of worrying, praise him. Instead of worrying, thank him. Instead of worrying, worship him. Amen. See, you begin to use kingdom principles. Amen. Amen. Instead of worrying, you know, take a kingdom principle. And that is one of them. I'm going to show you a few. He says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Sufficient for the day is its own troubles. Why is it that worry is your first take? You know, some of us just like to wake up and start to worry. For what? 
Why don't you pray? I mean, it takes the same effort just to praise him and thank him. In fact, less effort. Amen. You say, well, Pastor, you, you are like that. You are a go happy, lucky person. No, it's not that. Listen, I have enough more to worry um, um, than you. You say, why? Because I have to carry you as well. You understand? I have to add all of you to me. But I choose not. Let me repeat. I say I. I. No, no, don't say it. Say you You. choose Choose. not. Not. I won't carry you. (laughs) No, 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 no. You see, I have, listen, listen, I was in somebody's church. I was in the pastor's church and somebody came to the pastor and said, oh, uh, the the pastor was talking to the person. I was listening. I was not eavesdropping. I was dead. We're talking. (laughs) And the pastor said, the guy said, the pastor said, the guy Oh, so you went, you traveled so and so and so and you didn't tell us. So I said, okay, where is he going with this? He's talking to the congregation member. He said, so that we could cover you. Yeah. Cover you with what? I guess it's like I'm supposed to cover you when you're traveling. Then you will crash. (laughs) Oh, don't, don't, listen, listen. Never, ever depend on me when you are doing anything, traveling, catching a plane, that pastor is praying for me so the plane will arrive. Then you will die. Because guess what? I won't do it. Oh, some of you are like, what kind of church, what kind of pastor is this? No, I don't do that. Why? The man said he will never leave you nor forsake you. Then you say, pass me not by, O gentle Savior. <laughs> Hear my humble cry. While others, help me, help me. Catholics, help me. While others, what? You've forgotten? Yes. What that, thou art calling, pass me not by, O gentle Savior. The man said, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. So what's your problem? Are you, have you noticed that? What's your problem? Exactly. You don't need me to cover you. I can't even cover myself. (laughs) Cover you. You need Jesus. The angel of the Lord encamped around them that fear him and delivered them. You need the angel of the Lord, not me. I'm in Liverpool. What am I going to do with you? You are going to Russia. How can I cover you? Am I a witch? Are you catching what I'm trying to say? Church, I'm trying to get you to understand. The greater one lives on the inside of you. Are you listening to me? When you bought that aircraft, the lion of the tribe of Judah has arrived. But you see, people relegate their spirituality to somebody else. Do you know what the pastor is doing at that time? But there is one pastor who is always making intercession for you. Amen. His name is Jesus. He's our high priest. The Bible says he ever lived to make intercession for you. And my duty is to point you to him, not to me. What a whole bunch of men of God do is to point you to themselves. I am not the star of this film. Jesus is the star. All of us get to be co-stars. But he is the star. He's the bright and morning star, the Bible says. And he's the one we should be focused on. He's the one who will cover you. He's the one who not, who not let, allow your feet to, be, to hit against the rocks like the psalmist says. He's the one that we should be centered on. Are you catching this? That's why the Bible says, he who the son has set free is free indeed. He who watches over Israel, over Zion, will neither slumber nor sleep. How can I watch you? I drove from Liverpool. We got home with all the roadblocks and stuff like that. We got home almost midnight. We crashed 
and slept between 12 and 6. Who was watching you? <laughs> Me. Even I didn't dream. You know, I didn't even dream. I'm too tired to dream. Watch over you. Don't let me go back to my roots. You say, what are your roots? Watch, and, uh, watch over you, care okay? You. <laughs> no, no. He watches over you. As you get to your bed, know that he is watching. You are so important. If you are the only person. You know, Sister Bumi is, was in, was, uh, you know, her uh, uh, Streetwise, she was in Liverpool. But I always come, this story comes to mind because we're kind of the same age and we all had our kids at the same And then Bumi went to have Isosa, you know, years down the road. And so one day we're having a chat. We're just having a chat, just fellowshipping. And we're like, all of us were like, Bumi, how are you doing? How do you do this? How, like, what? You know, like, you have to now wake up in the night and stuff. And you know what? She had this big smile on her face. She says, I literally go and stand by the court, willing the child to wake up. Willing the child to wake up. And I said, you do? She said, yes. That's how much in love she was with the child. This is a human being. Do you know what? God stands by your bed. Willing for you to wake up. Come on. Wake up now. We've got to talk. You slept too much. Three hours is enough. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up. That is the God we say. You know, let me, let, me flick the, let me flick the chat. Do you know, if I was saying this about the devil, most of you would agree with me. Yes. It's easy for you to accept that with the devil. Yes, the average Christian will accept that about the devil and them. Then they will accept. If I told the average Christian that the devil will walk with you into the plane, they will say amen. <laughs> they will believe that. And I'm saying to you, God Hallelujah. is in you. Hallelujah. And he will take care of you. Hallelujah. He will protect you. Hallelujah. If you rely and depend on him. Yes. He's not a man that he should lie. Yes. No, is he the son of man. Will he speak or say it, or will he not do it? It is time to dig a grave and put worry inside and anxiety inside and the curse inside and bury it, forget about six foot, bury it 95 feet and begin to take the word of God. Are you catching what I'm trying to say? Do you know what? We live in a season. There is a spirit out Seasons come where the devil releases specific attacks. And one of them is causing, causing a lot of anxiety, worry and anxiety. And a lot of diseases that we are seeing today are connected to that. Doctors are saying, professionals are saying it. Among our young people. And these are the principles that will help you. Hallelujah. Let me give you a few scriptures because I've got to preach something else. This is very important. Every young person should be here. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 and 7. Just write it down. It says, be anxious for what? Nothing. Paul is this time. Paul. And he's saying the same thing that Jesus said. He didn't say be anxious for some things. For what? Nothing. Hallelujah. Nothing. He said, but pastor, you know, I've not got my letter for school yet. I've not got my employer. Hey, don't be anxious about it. Amen. That's the thing. That's what he said. Don't be anxious. Being anxious means your mind is going everywhere in all kinds of directions. Yeah. The, the, that word cares in the dictionary. I, I, this is just a dictionary. I, I think I took it and I put it somewhere, stuck it somewhere. But somewhere it's, it's, it's just evaporated. Let me see. Let me see. I, I, I did some work on it. If I can find it, help me, Jesus. Oh, I don't know where it went. Let, let me see. Let me see something. Where that? No, no, it won't work. But I have it somewhere. It's hidden somewhere in my notes. But but it's it talks about. You know what? It's so important. It's so important. Give me a second. You don't mind? Okay. Let, let me go find it because it's it's 
you know, I do all this research and all this stuff and put all these notes down for you. So let's see. Let me look for it. Let me look for it. Give me a second. Mm, 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 mm. Where are you? Come forward in Jesus' name. There. Okay. Let's see. Now, listen to this. Cares. The word cares. It means to bring disruption to the personality and mind. To bring disruption to the personality and mind. Distress or uneasiness of mind caused by fear of danger or misfortune. Should I repeat? Disruption to the personality and mind. Distress or uneasiness of mind caused by fear of danger or misfortune. Amen. Amen. Let me go back. One more time. Ooh, I just closed it. <laughs> I, just, I just shut it down. Um, did somebody get it fully? Yes, yes. Did, did you get it fully at the back? Maybe they will help you. Sometimes, they, well, say it, say it loud. Caused by danger or misfortune. I'm sorry, I, I had it locked somewhere. Amen. Thank God for technology. All right. Now, now back to Matthew chapter number uh, 13. Back to Matthew 13. There's a second thing that Jesus talked about. Uh, uh, watch this. That, that messes our heart. Watch this. He said, the cares of what? This world. Then he said, the what? The deceitfulness of riches. He didn't say riches. You see, that, that is what I, I get upset with people. They say, you see, riches. So you're not supposed to be rich. He didn't. Anytime God, listen, God, God, the streets that he made are gold. Not just gold. They are transparent gold. I am, I'm yet to see that kind of gold. Okay? It means it doesn't exist here. The man, that is the street. Why is he nervous about being rich? <laughs> the king Solomon, who he made king, allowed him to be rich because of all the things he did for him, was so rich. And I told you that biblical economists say that if the riches of Solomon are transferred in time to this time, Elon Musk, or whatever his name is, will be, will be like a pauper compared to Solomon. Hallelujah. Are you catching what I'm trying to say? Why, why will God, why is God, God nervous about riches? He's not. So anytime there is something evil about riches, the Bible qualifies it. It says deceitfulness of riches. It didn't say riches. It didn't say riches. The ch I just let you. You know the church that we work with when we go to the central church um, in, 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 uh, in Rwanda, when we go to Rwanda, the church that some of you have been there before that hosts us and help us to do all the mission stuff, and we, we send them some money. They are, building, they are building a church, you know, and they sent me a letter. They just sent me a letter. Pastor Jimmy just sent us a letter to thank us for sending them an offering to help towards their their. That for them, and I multiply. I know they are, they can, I multiplied. So I said, they are getting this amount of money from what? For us, it will not be, it's, well, it's quite decent money, but it's not, obviously, value wise, it's not like awesome. But yeah, thank you. What I'm trying to say, that, that made them a little bit richer in their building fund or whatever they are using. We need money to do stuff like that. We need riches. We need riches to fly the air. You think when I get to, I get to the, 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 when I get to the ticket counter um, at, the, at the airport, they say, oh, Reverend. Oh, Rev. Rev, come this way. Oh, go, free of charge. Go to the business lounge. Go and eat free. And then when you get in the plane, go and sit in first class for free. Do you think, do you think that's what they do to us or to me? Sometimes I am scared to use the word rev in these parts of the world. Yes. 
Because that's when they want to put you to the back of the queue. Because of the anti-Christ element of things. Are you catching what I'm trying to say? No. I have to pay the same amount of money that everybody else is paying. When they send the electricity bill to my house, they don't say they miss my house and take it next door because I'm a minister of the gospel and the light that I kept on through the night, I was using it to pray. <laughs> no. They bring it out. Sometimes I am convinced they add more to it just because they know I'm a minister. Are you catching what I'm trying to say? We need, you see, the gospel is free. Do you know that? It's free. Freely you have received freely give, but it costs money to pipe it in. Let me just stop for a moment. Let me acknowledge Nana's mom stand. Let me, let me acknowledge you. A lot of you don't know mom. I forgot to. This is Nana Wolf. Nana Wolf stand. This is, you all know Nana Wolf. This is Nana Wolf's mom. She looks younger than her, but um, amen. They lost their dad last, last year. Last year. Um, he used to come here sometimes. He lived in Ghana. Wonderful man. And she's a minister. Okay, she's a minister. She's a minister. But one of the things that, Mama, you, you major on and looking after orphans and, and, and needy children. Yes, that's what she does. Thank you, Mom. You know? Now, I want to ask her, the, the children you look after, do, do they eat food? They eat, they eat food, they eat, oh, they don't just breathe air, because air is free. They eat food, they eat. You a, a lot more than us, you huh? have. They drink water. And they, they have to live in, uh, what do you call it? A house, accommodation. Do they go to school? You, and, and it's free. Free for them. But is it free for you? No, no. Uh-huh. Are you catching what I'm trying to say? Yes. It takes money. Yes. It takes money. I should be able to, when she gets ready to go, I should be able to say to her mom, how much do you need for the year? Mm. Yes. See, that's what I, that's my heart. And she said, okay, our budget for the, for the year is 20,000. Mm. And I said, here, 20,000 here. Wow. Don't worry the whole, I mean, don't bother about anything. This is too, honestly, that's my heart. That's what should be. That's and that's what should be. So riches are not what? Wrong. We have to qualify the deceitfulness of riches. You need money. Every one of those children that she's raising, do you know what is going to happen? They will all remember what God did for them. And do you know what? When they grow up, they will take that same God with them. The children we look after in India, they know God did this for them. God picked them from the railway station. God picked them from the, the drug hoods and has set them in those places. When we go to India, you ask them, what do you want to do? They say, we want to do the same thing. The kids, as little as they, yes, amongst some of them want to be doctors, this, that, accountants, these teachers, and stuff like that. But you know what? They always say, and we want to help. We want to help. But today we have a whole bunch of people, young people, feel entitled. I'm not knocking any of you young people. But that's what we are. There's a, a sense of entitlement. And there's a lot of it, this direction, this deceitfulness of riches. People want to be rich, rich. For what? what? Why do you just want to be rich? For what? You know, people think, if I make all that money, my life will be okay. Just read the, the, just read the paper. Let's go to Hollywood, okay? Let's go to Hollywood. They have, they have all the money, but guess what? They have the highest divorces. They have su highest suicides. They have messed up children. I mean, come on, think, think, think. If money was it, shouldn't they... Yeah, they will show you their plush houses. They will show you their Bentleys and stuff like that. Whether I drive a Volkswagen or a Bentley, the cars do the same thing, okay? 
They just, listen, I've never seen a car cook food before. <laughs> when you find one, call me to see it. I've never seen a car go into the kitchen and say, make way, I'm going to grill some, some meat. I've, I, except in cartoons. <laughs> or make believe, you know, the Transformers. It's, it's not true. Everything, a car takes, if it's a Volkswagen, it takes you from A to B. If it's a Peugeot, it takes you from A to B. If it's a Maserati thing, it takes you from A to B. The difference is you. It's us. We make the difference. The difference is, see, the deceitfulness of riches. What? What? Listen, money has an assignment, you know. The money that you are having has mission. But we don't want to, a lot of us don't want to release it to go on the mission. The deceitfulness of riches. You know, this is not to the unbeliever. This is us, to us. To us. Where was I? 23? Matthew 13? 23. 22, I beg your pardon. Let, let me show you a few scriptures. You know, again, Jesus preached a whole thing about this. Go to Luke chapter number 14. I've got four minutes. Let me preach this. Luke chapter number 14, verse 15 to 24. It says, now one of those who sat at the table with him heard these things. He said to him, blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then he, that is speaking about Jesus, said to him, a certain man gave a great supper and invited many and sent his servants at supper time to say to those who were invited, come for all things are now ready. But they all, that is their friends, all with one accord began to make what? Excuses. See, sometimes people say that the, 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 the Bible is outmoded. I, I can't see a current word more current for us spiritually than this word. Excuses. 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 Then it says, the first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground and so I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. Another said, I have bought uh, five yoke of oxen. I'm going to test them. I ask that you have me excused. Still another said, I have married a wife. And therefore, I cannot come. So that the servants came and reported these things to his master. Watch this. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, go quickly into the streets, the lanes, the city, and bring in here the poor, the maimed, and the lame. And the servant said, Master, it is done as you commanded, and still there is room. Then the master said to the servant, Go out in the highways, the hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. He says, For I say to you that none of these men whom were invited shall taste my supper. When you study this scripture carefully, it means that this man had already long time ahead of time, told these people that I am going to be doing this supper. So it's not like they showed up one day and said, Master says you should come. And he said, oh, I'm on my way to do such and such. He, they knew. The tone of it tells me that they know the master, they fellowship with him, and he had given them notice. That is why the Bible says that all of them with one accord start to give what? Excuses. And today we live in the season of excuses. Excuses. Especially when it comes to spiritual things. Our walk with God. The airway, the, the, the airports are open. The countries are open. You can't tell me pandemic. You don't give me pandemic excuse. I'm ca- Already my invitations are beginning to come in. One of them is India. They say, I should come to Chennai. You say, you are going? I'm going. I'm going to preach and teach. I've got another one 
Send the, I just got another one, a, a whole whatever. Said I should come to another country. I'm praying about it. I'm going. Amen. You say, you say, but there's pandemic. But you take the plane for business. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. You catch the plane to go on business. Why the devil don't attack when you're going for business? <laughs> are you catching what I'm trying to say? We are making excuses and excuses when it comes to spiritual things. We will do everything. We'll go to every party. we eat every chicken. The moment they say this chicken has been to church, you say, hey, I won't touch it. Because it's, 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 you know, we're making excuses around spiritual things. It is a ploy of the devil. Yes, we will breathe every air, except church air. Yes. Except church air. What have we done wrong? What has Jesus done to you than just to save you? And protect you and keep you? That's what that's what he's done. My brother, my own brother, he, you, you know him. He lay at the verge of death just a year ago. At the verge or a year and a bit ago. Like this. Because of pandemic. And do you know what? We began to pray. And what blessed me is that all the nieces and the nephews were seeking God. And the day they sent a message to us, and they said to us, they can't do anything. I never forget, it was 12 midnight, and they said, we can't do anything for him. Just get ready, he's going. I knelt down by my bedside. Jane knelt on the other bedside. We just prayed. Then, I don't know what happened. By about 2 a.m., nobody said to anybody, stop praying. It's like everybody stopped praying. The girls were in their room, they were praying. By 2 a.m., everybody stopped praying. Nobody, nobody said stop. There's something just inside. We crawled back in bed. Nobody asked any question. We slept. You say, where is he? He's, he's still here. But the deliverance came that time. Came that time. What has Jesus done against you? What has Jesus done against me? For me to be giving excuses and excuses and excuses. When it comes to him, it's all, listen, this is about him, you know. This is about him. This is about him. And in the next church, and the other church down the road, and the other place, and there is something running across all the churches. And I speak to all the pastors. People are not showing up for church. They all say the same thing. If you don't show up for church, who will teach the children? Who will see to the youth? You know, we don't get these things. Say, well, pandemic, pan pandemic. I will share my story of pandemic later on. Not now. I'll tell you my story. For now, I won't tell you. But I'll tell you my story of pandemic later on. I need to jump some hoops. And when I'm finished, I'll tell you. But I'll serve God with every drop of blood and every drop of energy that God has given me. You understand what I'm saying? I will teach this word, Amen. preach this word to you guys, cast out every devil and cockroach, everything that God has allowed me. Oh, the devil, he, he, he just pressed the wrong button. He just pressed the wrong button. Are you listening to me? And every, all your children, 
all your children shall know God. As long as this, this man is alive, all our children, your baby will know God. Will, your children, all of them will serve Almighty God. The vision for this house remains. Remains. Are you listening to me? And all I need is a few good men. That's all. When I say men and women. There's a, there's a film called A Few Good Men. That's all you need, a few good men who can put their hand to the plow. Have you noticed that Joel was by herself? Yes. You, don't, you don't need 20 people to worship. That's right. yep. I'm not saying we, there shouldn't be 20 people worshiping. But I'm trying to say, all she did was pick a mic, that's and that's it. Amen. All we need are a few good hearts yes. Hallelujah. who will not give excuses and excuses, and we will see this kingdom of God go across every nation. Just a few good people. Amen. I don't know where the message went today, but hey. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.